Hey there, it's me, Matt Heffernan. Welcome back to my channel. And as it is now known, the Retro Desk. This is not the Retro Desk. This is the modern Swedish desk. But the Retro Desk is something you're going to see in a video that's coming up very soon. And you would have seen it in the uh, little opening bit. That's another new thing on my channel. A lot of things are changing. And, uh, of course, we're doing some more on-camera stuff with my channel. And as you can tell... Generally, when you see my hand, it is not for hand modeling purposes, it is for an unboxing. So, if you saw the uh, thumbnail, you would know what kind of things we are unboxing. In fact, they are two things of the same category. They are retro computers. And without further ado, let's bring the first one out. Now, this one came to... Uh, from Bulgaria, from the ancient city of Plovdiv. And, of course, uh, from such an old city, uh, is a very cool place to have a retro computer come from. And uh, we're going to see which one this is. As you can see, it is a very small, it's a, just a tiny box inside this big shipping bag. So we're going to cut this open. And inside the bag, we find a smaller bag. And so here, we'll uh, open up our little internal bag. And we'll see what's inside here. Oh my. Yep, it is, of course, an Aegon Light 2. And uh, this is a new uh, retro computer. Uh, it is not meant to be necessarily backwards compatible with older computers. Uh, in fact, it's an interesting uh, amalgam of uh, uh, old Z80 based computers as well as the BBC Micro, which of course was 6502 based. So this of course, it runs BBC Basic, but it's also, it could run uh, CPM. It could run a lot of things. So let's take a look at this actual board. And it is, it's just the board. I don't have the enclosure for it. Let's take it out. Now with a little more light, we can actually <laughs> see what this looks like. So yeah, it's just the little board. There's no uh, enclosure with this, although you can, uh, from the fine people at Olamax, get an enclosure for this version of the board. And here it is. The uh, Aegon Light 2. Now, if like all of these modern retro computers, these are their dreams that people have, and they want to bring it to fruition. And a great way that you can bring your project to fruition is through the folks that made uh, this board and the one next one I'm going to see, the fine folks at PCB Way. And I'm proud to announce that PCB Way is the very first sponsor of the Retro Desk. Their manufacturing team in China can make a printed circuit board of your design for as little as $5 a piece for 10 standard PCBs. And for each new customer, they offer a $5 coupon, so you can get your first prototype board for free. PCBWay can also do 3D printing and CNC machining to finish out your project and give you a complete prototyping and production capability without having to build your own manufacturing space. Check them out today at PCBWay.com and tell them that the RetroDesk sent you. So here we have the Aegon Light 2. You can see there's not a lot to it in terms of uh, ICs. It's all surface mount. There's no through hole on here. But we've got here a, uh, the, a Lattice uh, FPGA and we have an EZ80. Of course, this is a, a true uh, Zilog 8-bit, uh, modern 8-bit microprocessor. This is still in production, and it is able to run much faster than the Z80s uh, back in the old days. And uh, so you can still create modern 8-bit things, generally for embedded purposes. But of course, this is taking it uh, into this sort of uh, fun retro land by uh, being able to run old languages, operating systems, and, and stuff like that. So what else do we get on here 
besides these other <laughs> random doodads. So we've got some, uh, looks like some GPIO over here. You can see it's nicely labeled on there. There is uh, some user extension port right here. It has a little port here for a uh, lithium ion battery, which you can also order from Olamex. And on the back here, we have the uh, power input. It's a USB-C with a little reset switch there. Uh, we have a VGA output, sound output, a uh, USB port. My understanding is that this is not a true USB, that this is just um, a PS2 pass-through. If you have a true uh, PS2 uh, keyboard, you can use one of uh, these deals, of course, right here, which allows you to plug in PS2. I have a real PS2 keyboard connected to this, and this would allow me to pass through. But, of course, some modern USB uh, keyboards still uh, speak PS2 protocol, so you can just plug that in directly. And uh, then we've got a micro SD card slot. And, and then there's uh, this, I believe, is an interface for reprogramming the FPGA. So, yeah, it, it's uh, pretty simple, and we'll be firing this up in a future video. We're just going to do the unboxing for now. So there's, of course, not much else to the box. We've got uh, some little rubber feet. So I, I guess we'll just put those little <laughs> rubber feet on there. Come on. Of course, uh, this is just going to be temporary. I'll, if if I keep uh, playing around with the uh, Aegon, I will probably uh, get an enclosure for it. <laughs> so uh, those don't don't fit terribly well. <laughs> I'll, I'll figure something out. I might uh, use some different offsets to, to hold this thing up or just leave it in the little box. <laughs> so yeah, so that's a, that's the Aegon Lite, um, the Aegon Lite 2. It's part of a, a line of these Easy 80 based uh, retro computers. And so we're gonna we're gonna put this through spaces because the, the main selling point of this one is its speed. And uh, so yeah, we'll see just how fast this is. And uh, that will leads us to our next thing. This is gonna be a much bigger box. It's so big, it doesn't fit <laughs> in there. So let's adjust our camera and we can see it comes from our friend Kevin Williams at Texelec. And I can think you can figure out what this is gonna be. Of course, this would be spoiled in the, uh, in the thumbnail. This is, of course, the main, main attraction here of this video. This is the retro computer that we've been waiting for from the very beginning. I see that Kevin is not shy when it comes to the packing tape. Got some of this business. All right. So... First thing out of the box is a mouse. It's a uh, Perix PS2 mouse. Uh, this is similar to uh, the same brand of uh, PS2 keyboard that I already have. That's, in fact, you saw the <laughs> the connector end of that. And uh, so yeah, this is a, a brand new PS2 mouse, and this is what we're going to be <laughs> connecting to it. We will also have a new uh, Perix keyboard that will go with it. And then the main thing itself, oh, and lots of bubble wrap. Let's open this bubble wrap up. So bubbly, so much bubble wrap, oh my goodness. I do want to thank Kevin, not only for sending me this, but for taking such great care to pack it. Because uh, a big PCB like this is going to be uh, subject to a lot of flexing and 
yeah, we definitely don't want that to happen. We don't want to knock any of these solder joints loose. Oh, I think you can see the logo already. I can see it. There we go. Commander X16, Dev 005. This is the fifth one ever made. <laughs> so that's kind of crazy. <laughs> four, <laughs> four others uh, went to other folks. <laughs> the Dev uh, 1 and 2, I know, went to uh, uh, Dave Murray and uh, and Kevin. Of course, Dave and Murray, the APIC guy, the uh, uh, founder of the Commander X16 project and the leader. And uh, so there was a couple other guys <laughs> that got theirs. And now I got mine. So, let's see. Oh my goodness. Been waiting for nearly four years for this. And here it is. Now that, that is a thing of beauty. Let's, let's take that all in. All right. Now, <laughs> obviously what you'll notice, different from... The uh, Aegon 2 is, this is all through-hole uh, component, with the exception of this daughter board here. This is the Vera daughter board, and it has also a little FPGA on there with some other stuff. And But meanwhile, on the main board, we've got lots of big, chunky dip chips. <laughs> so we've got here our uh, WDC... Uh, 65CO2, or sorry, 6522, the VIA chip, and so I guess what I've got, yeah, that's the user VIA, so that's populated. Um, if you get one of these uh, Gen 1 boards, this might not actually be populated for you, but the, the one uh, VIA chip that you do need is this one here, the system VIA, and here is a brand new uh, 65CO2 uh, processor. And uh, on this board, it's going to run at 8 megahertz. Uh, they are spec to run up to 14, but this is brand new WDC. And uh, Bill Mensch and his company are, are still producing these. And uh, then we got over here our expansion ports. It's the uh, same uh, form factor as the original uh, Japanese Famicom but you won't, don't want to stick Famicom cartridges into these. They will blow up, so <laughs> the, the pinout is entirely different. Here we got our, um, our ATX uh, power supply over here. So when I get this fired up, this will be in an old computer case that I am going to be upcycling or downcycling, as the case may be. I'm getting a uh, uh, second-generation Core i3 and uh, <laughs> turning it into an 8-bit computer. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, over here, we've got some uh, uh, custom logic over here for the memory and I.O. decoding. Uh, this is based, of course, on the logic that's on the original VIC-20 board. And here's our, our jumper for the system speed. If I did want to downshift to 4 megahertz or 2 megahertz, I could do that. And we've got uh, so many... <laughs> so many lovely little chips on here. Um, of course, the the rarest and most special are these two right here. These are the only two chips that are not brand new. These are uh, a Yamaha YM2151. This is the FM uh, synthesis chip. And the YM3012, which is the digital to analog converter that is made for this. Now, I think there might be compatible chips to this that are, are still made, but it's uh, not not necessarily an easy thing to get to. And these are definitely not being made, but there are a huge number out there. A lot of computers in uh, Japan use them, so they're all out there. And then, meanwhile, here we've got our uh, ROM and RAM. Now, this is uh, fully populated. I have a full uh, two megabytes of uh, banked RAM here. And that's uh, these four chips, or that is that two megabytes? And then I've got the <clears throat> the low RAM. This is a 64 um, 
kilobytes on there, and then we have our uh, ROM. And uh, of course, the ROM on the final dev board will have additional banks that can be accessed through a, uh, a cartridge type interface that will go into the uh, expansion bars. Excuse my voice, I'm starting to lose it, so we're gonna <laughs> wrap this up. We've got a CR2032 battery uh, back up here for the, uh, the real-time clock to keep that ticking. I'll have, to, I'll have to get one here, it doesn't look like Kevin packed one for me. And then back here, we have our, our two uh, USB ports for a uh, keyboard and mouse. We've got our sound out. We've got uh, SNES style connectors, so real SNES controllers can be connected here. We have our full size SD card slot. And then we have three kinds of video output, composite, S-video, and VGA. And this VGA can also, um, <clears throat> it can be uh, non-interlaced or uh, interlaced uh, VGA uh, connection. And then here we have a single uh, IEC port. So that's uh, that's what we got in here. And uh, of course, a few LEDs and that nice sticker there that says Dev005. Now, let's take a look here. What I'm not sure of is whether I got an official keyboard that is a Commander X16 keyboard or if this is just another Parix keyboard. This is going to be a big thing. Now, so it's not the custom printed keyboard, but what I got was this nice sheet of custom printed keycaps and then just a, uh, a vanilla Parrots uh, keyboard. In fact, so vanilla, it's white. <laughs> so what I'll be doing is uh, putting these uh, stickers on here. Though at some point I'll probably get the properly printed uh, keyboard, but... But for now, I've got an official sticker that I can put on there. And so, yeah, I'm going to be doing a full custom job <laughs> on this system. So that's it. The Commander X16, it exists. It's real. There are a hundred of these dev units being made right now. And there's more to come. The full production will go once uh, once the uh, final uh, last minute changes are, are done being made, but this is a, a fully functioning system and we're gonna start, we're gonna play some of the games I already created on it and we're gonna create some new stuff for it. So that's what we have to look forward to here at the Retro Desk, all right? And hopefully I'll have a voice for those. And uh, that's all I got for you today. And let's uh, have a little shout out here for our uh, patrons who really make this whole channel works. And, uh, that's it. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.